Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the Su-57. By popular demand, uh, a lot of people ask for a review of a couple videos on the Felon, and I uh, figured we would take a look. Now, uh, realize that this aircraft is... Uh, it's really tough to analyze because I think there's only one operational uh, Su-57 out there. The uh, other one crashed before being delivered, and now there's one. So, you know, it's it's really not something that's a current threat because it just doesn't, you know, exist in mass. Uh, but we'll take a look at some of the videos and some of the capabilities and just some of the things I've noticed, you know, looking at this stuff. This first one's like a Russian hype video uh, for the Su-57, so I'll leave the link in the description. I will stop as we go, so don't expect me to uh, play it straight through and then read it or uh, talk about it because uh, that's what we do. And space bar for the kids at home. Play. So right off the bat, you've got the big Earth there, infrared search and track, which is common with flankers. Uh, and MIGs. Uh, it's a very common uh, feature there. You've got kind of a, a, a nice canopy, a lot of rivets there that are uh, visible, uh, which is not going to help its stealth characteristics. Uh, three pedo tubes. There you go. Interesting. From the top view, uh, Flanker's got the wanker. Very common, flankers usually have this uh, for electronic countermeasures, or EA, electronic attack. Got the split tails, and what I thought was cool is, so the Hornet, you know, we've got leading edge extensions, leading edge root extensions uh, on the F5. These are actually programmable, so these move based on the angle of attack, so you get more bite into the air, uh, which will help with the... Um, high AOA maneuverability uh, so in a dogfight. Oh, chocks removed. So uh, a lot of, I think people have discussed this from the rear, um, 360 degree thrust vectoring, but it doesn't have the smaller square nozzles like the F-22 has, so uh, kind of not much of a stealth signature from the rear so to speak, but I think that's because they're figuring, you know, your IR signature is so big, you know, why waste uh, the design and the brain bites on that and lose a little bit of thrust. So uh, I think that's a design trade-off they had. Uh, I don't know whether it's it's better or worse. This is not as stealthy as, you know, other uh, you know, Western designs. All right, so uh, we've talked about this before. Standard Russian design, horrible rear visibility. And I know people are like, well, the F-35 is too, and I don't disagree. The F-35 made a lot of compromises for the B model. But this is just uh, the rear visibility in this jet is bad. And that is a very standard thing for MiG-29, 257, stuff like that. I mean, theoretically, with a good radar, do you need it? But my argument is, yeah, two stealth aircraft with EA, you might end up at the merge and you don't want to have, uh, you know, when you look over your shoulder doing a high aspect merge, you don't want to be like, well, where'd he go? Where'd who go? Because lose sight, lose the fight. So you got your, um, this dude's mask is not fitting at all. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that. Doesn't look like he's, he's got, it uh, looks like the, uh, uh, like a helmet mount and queuing system right there, maybe a monocle that flips down, but it's not like a Jahemix or anything like that. And uh, maybe an NVG bracket, uh, but it's not like the F-35 helmet that's Gucci and, and full up there. And standard Russian green, I guess they said that the greenish blue makes it, makes it calm down. I don't know. Not a lot of room in that cockpit just in general. And looking forward, you got the big canopy bow. So forward visibility is also going to be affected. Canopy bow's in the way. Uh, I don't know why they couldn't just get rid of the canopy bow and have a single piece canopy. That probably would have been a little bit better, but it's in the way. But um, 
Yeah, so visibility in this cockpit is going to be pretty bad in general. So it looks like it doesn't have flapper ons. The flaps are not down. So I wonder how that affects approach and takeoff speeds. Obviously, they're going to be a little bit higher. Maybe the thrust vectoring and the big wing um, reduce the need for that. But it does not have appear to have any kind of flapper on or flap system on the trailing edge, trailing edge flaps. Does have leading edge flaps, though. You can see them scheduling there. Yeah, you can see them there. Um, let's back up for a second. So if it would just be this part, it would be a sexy airplane. The added part, I mean, it's kind of like a little bit of false advertising because it looks really sexy if it were a little bit thinner. She's a big girl. She's not a skinny chick at all. Yep, so you got your leading edge flaps there. I believe these things schedule as well. So you got a lot of high alpha capability. The square-ish uh, intakes for stealth characteristics is real big intakes, kind of like a Su-35. And it's supposed to be a lot lighter too, as much like a, a Su-35 with, um, you know, like carbon composites and stuff like that. Do a barrel roll. All right, there's the visibility. It looks like he's got some condensation on the canopy from the air conditioner. Um, what is that mask? Is that, uh, you know what? That's a PPG. So that appears to be connected to his helmet like the F-16 had, where he had an inflatable bladder in the helmet. So it would inflate to push the mask closer to you. And then you'd get pressure breathing under G. Maybe. My guess. I don't know. Not familiar with the Russian uh, life support equipment. Well, the Russians love the air show stuff. Oh, that does have. That was wrong. Yeah, it does have trailing edge flaps. So they do they just not put them down for takeoff? Because I, I didn't see that down on the takeoff. We'll look at the next video. There's an air show video, but yeah, so it does have those trading edge flaps. It's just, maybe they just don't use them for takeoff. I don't know. And it's a high alpha missile shot. That is two is blind. A lot of air show stuff. High alpha maneuvering. More aileron rolls. Oh, not, not a full aileron roll. Got the heat signature on that thing, man. Yeah, so I guess they are, it does have flaps. Maybe they just don't take off with them, or maybe I just missed it. But uh, big beefy gear. So this is again, Russians like to have souped up gear for austere environments. And a drag shoot, nice with uh, spoilers there. Cool. All right, so this was uh, some air show. Flaps are up, canopy's open. I wonder if that's because of the air show or because the cockpit cooling doesn't work that great on the ground. You know, as a pilot, that's one of the things I, were, I wonder about because like T-38's the same way. You gotta run around with the canopy open because the air conditioner sucks on the ground, works fine in the air. You saw the last one had the condensation probably from the AC that had dripped onto the canopy because he'd done some inverted stuff or whatever. But uh, interesting as to, you know, whether he's doing this for the air show or if it's just hot, you know, maybe because of all the avionics, cooling on the ground is a problem. But, um, I mean, it's a good looking airplane. I, I like it. Oh, God, all these people. 
COVID super spreader event. He's waving. Yeah, maybe it's just for the air show. That is a tiny cockpit, man. Oh boy. There is not a lot of room for that guy. He's doing donuts. Yeah, front and rear visibility from the cockpit is not great. All right, here we go. Yeah, I see the flaps are up. I guess you don't need them. I mean, we've seen it has them, so oh, move your umbrella, lady. Bring an umbrella to an air show. Yep. Doesn't need much takeoff roll at all. That's clean, too. I mean, let's see what it does combat loaded. Nice vertical performance. I mean, the thrust to weight's probably pretty good. Nice little pedal turn there. Yeah, so very similar to, you know, Su-30, Su-35, very maneuverable at high alpha. Don't know why you would do that maneuver. Seems, I mean, because you're out of energy and out of airspeed. Good for air shows. There's the trailing edge flap scheduling, so I guess they just don't use them on takeoff. Is a Cobra? Yeah. Hit the brakes, he'll fly right by. Once again, good for air shows. He's light enough, he can get his energy back, and it's a pretty good for a dogfight, too. That's pretty cool. I mean, to be able to turn and get your nose around like that, because now he can cue weapons, uh, high off bore sight capability, now that's useful. That's a really... <laughs> Impressive maneuver there. And it's a real thin profile. Other than the big honking intakes, there's not much forward profile to it, so it'd be hard to spot as well. You know, nose on. This is the Cobra. Both engines just compressor stall. What's going on there? Hanging it on the blades. No masks. Everybody in Russia has Rona. Oh, that dude had a hat that said boy. I guess he's finally determined his pronouns. Yeah, that is impressive to me, being able to do that J turn. Turn back around. I mean, that's actually really maneuverable. So, because that's good for, you know, queuing weapons and stuff like that, getting turned back around. I mean, it's almost like a helicopter return to target. Maybe good for strafe, too. I mean, if you had to get right back on target very quickly. So, an air to ground wouldn't be too bad either. Very maneuverable. Huge platform, though. I wonder how wide the wingspan is. I mean, that would be an easy target to gun if you got him in a lot of plan form. Much like an F-15. I think it'd be fun to fly. But this is all air show stuff. I mean, really what matters is, you know, sensors, weapons integration, how does it perform tactically? You know, being able to do the air show stuff's cool, but how does it work at 10,000 feet? You know, how's this gonna work at 15,000 feet? How's it gonna work fully loaded? 
I mean, you can tell a lot of things. One, it's very maneuverable. Two, it's got a lot of thrust. Um, it's got a lot of cool capabilities uh, that would help, you know, like this, for example. And really, the other thing is, you know, can it get its energy back when it does something like that? Like this, I mean, I don't know why you'd want to be in a falling leaf like this. This is, I mean, completely useless. But being able to get out of it, it's a good thing. And now he's landing. That flaps are down for landing. Oh. Nice. Stops really well, too, even without a shoot. Good brakes. Well, that's it. That's cool. It's a good looking airplane. I mean, it's, uh, you know, people ask, are you worried about it? Well, no. I mean, there's one, so no. Um, it's had its share of problems, but. You know, if it can deliver everything it advertises, yeah, it's a formidable aircraft. Um, you know, it's got some design limitations and stuff, but, you know, it's a real leap ahead as far as, you know, fifth gen technology for uh, Sukhoi. So, you know, I mean, I'd love to fly one. It'd be cool. Um, I think you'd have some limitations, though, with, you know, your radar cross section and visibility. I think those are the two things. I don't know much about the avionics. Uh, you know, they didn't get much into that. So what other sensors does it have? How does it put those sensors together um, and employ weapons and all that stuff? I mean, that that is really what matters more than airshow maneuvers, because airshow maneuvers, you know, I mean, how often are we even in dogfights? So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.